What's up, my name's Technobber here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll show you how to download and install a Minecraft Forge 1.19 server. It's incredibly simple and I'll try and make this tutorial as easy to follow as possible. There's also more 1.19 guides linked in the description down below if you'd like to see any of them. To begin, in the description down below, you'll find a link to the Forge 1.19 website. When you get to this page on the left hand side, make sure you have Minecraft 1.19 expanded and you've clicked on 1.19 and it says 1.19 over here. Then you can click download. In future, 1.19 will be lower down on this list, so just make sure you're looking at the right one. Then click install it to start the download. This is how we install not only the client of Minecraft Forge, but also the server as well. Wait a couple of seconds and in the top right, you should see a skip button. Simply click this and a Minecraft Forge jar file will then download. Note that if you click this file and it opens in something like WinRAR, rather than showing you a window like this, in the description down below you'll find a guide called JarFix that shows you exactly how to fix this issue and get it opening up as per normal. When you see this screen here, if you haven't already, simply install your Minecraft Forge 1.19 client. Then when you're done, select Install Server and we'll click the three dots to choose a different folder. For me, I've created and selected a Forge 1.19 folder on my desktop where I'll be installing my Forge server. Simply click OK and it should then download and set up your server in the folder you have selected. Wait for this to finish. There we go. Click OK and your Forge server has now successfully installed to the folder over here. Now inside of it, we'll have a couple of different files. Run.bat is what we'll be running to start up our server. However, to start with, you should open up userjvmargs.txt in Notepad or any other text editor so we can change how much RAM our server has. If you know what to put in here already, don't worry, simply get rid of the hash over here next to hyphen xmx4g and type in the amount of RAM you want here. xmx means maximum amount of RAM and 4g means 4 gigabytes. You can also enter M4 megabytes as shown up here. Essentially, you want to give your server as much RAM as possible with a minimum of 4 gigabytes of RAM. Though you don't want to choke out your game and the rest of your computer by eating all of the RAM available on your computer. To find out how much RAM you have available, if you don't already know, hit Control Shift and Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager and inside of here, head across to the Performance tab. Note that mine looks different to yours as I'm using Windows 11 Insider but essentially it's pretty much the same. The memory section shows you how much RAM you have in your computer as well as how much you're currently using. Essentially, the free RAM you have available is what you can allocate to your server. Though do note if you're not already running your Minecraft game and you plan on running it, you'll need to have some RAM available for that too. So for example, my computer has 16 gigabytes of RAM available. Windows and the game are taking up a total of 6 gigabytes of RAM, meaning I have 10 gigabytes of RAM available. Essentially, I can give my server, say, 8 gigabytes of RAM, meaning we have 2 available for web browsing, etc., and our computer to remain happy in the background. When you have a good amount of RAM in your head, simply type the amount in here. For me, I'll be entering 8G as I have a ton of RAM on my computer. I'll hit Ctrl S to save this file, and I can close it. Now from this point, we can start up our server and generate files. So I'll double click run.bat, a black window like this should open up and our server should then start, or at least it'll get to a point, tell us to accept a EULA, we can press any key and it'll vanish. Inside of the same folder, you'll find EULA.txt. Simply open this in a text editor and change false to true, then hit Ctrl S to save and close out of it. Now we can run our server once more by running run.bat. Essentially, when this is done, you'll be able to connect to it and your friends too, provided you've already port forwarded and allowed Minecraft through your firewall. Don't worry, I do have a guide in the description down below that we'll be getting to in just a moment that'll make things incredibly simple for you. For now, we'll wait for the server to start up and we'll join it locally on our own computer. There we go. So I'll fire up my Minecraft launcher and I'll simply select Forge 1.19 and click play next to it. If you'd like a setup guide as well as how to change your RAM for Forge 1.19, check the description down below for a guide on that. For now, I'll just wait for my game to start up as my server's already running. 
Now that my game is started up, I'll head into multiplayer, and because I'm playing on the same computer I'm running the server on, I'll click add server in the bottom right. Then for the server address, I'll enter 127.0.0.1 and click done. This is localhost, meaning your server on your computer. When it's added to the list, simply click join server. Then in the background, you'll see Techno joined the game in the console window, and now I'm in game. If I say something, it'll reflect on my server, meaning everything is running properly. I can run OP Techno to give myself operator, and heading back to Minecraft, I can slash game mode creative, for example, and start flying around. It's really as simple as that. Now our server is running. Congratulations. If you want people on the same local network to join you, all you need to do is hold start and press R at the same time, and inside of here, we'll be typing in CMD, then hit enter. In here, type in IP config and hit enter once more to bring up some information about our computer's networks. We're looking for the way that we're connected to the internet. For me, it's my ethernet adapter. Look for IPv4 address, and this is the address that someone sitting next to you on the same Wi-Fi network or ethernet network would use to connect to your server. In my case, and your case more than likely, 192.168.1. something. In my case, 1.20. Do keep a note of this number, as we will be using it later on for port forwarding if you'd like anyone outside of your local network to connect to your server. That may sound scary, though do keep in mind I have incredibly simple guides linked in the description down below that make everything a lot more simple. Though at this point, someone sitting next to you may not be able to connect to your server and it's more than likely due to the Windows firewall or a third-party firewall or antivirus. To allow Minecraft through our firewall, hit start, type in firewall and open up Windows Defender firewall with advanced security. If you don't see this window over here, you'll more than likely see a window about settings with an advanced button on the left-hand side. You'll need to click that to get here. If you see this yellow text, do keep in mind your firewall is managed by third-party software and you'll need to do it there instead. You'll need to Google for a guide for that. If you don't see this and you're just relying on the Windows Defender firewall, which is default, click Inbound Rules on the left-hand side and New Rule on the right-hand side. Now we can start filling out some information. We'll select Port, Next, TCP and we'll type in 25565 for the port over here. I'll select all and copy it using Control A and Control C as we'll be pasting this quite a lot later on. I'll then click Next, allow the connection, Next, all three ticked Next, and I'll type in MC 1.19 or anything that you want in the name section here, then click Finish. Then we'll click New Rule once more. We'll choose Port, Next, UDP this time, paste it in, 25565, Next, allow the connection, Next, all three ticked, next, MC 1.19, and finish. Then we'll head across to Outbound Rules and do the exact same. New rule, port, next, TCP 25565, next, allow, next, all three ticked, next, MC 1.19, finish. New rule, port, next, UDP 25565, next, allow the connection, next, all three ticked, next, MC 1.19, and congratulations, we've now allowed our Minecraft 1.19 fabric server through our Windows firewall, and we can close out of that. Someone sitting next to you should now be able to connect to your server that's running on your computer as long as this window is open somewhere on your computer and the server is running. Congratulations. But what about someone connecting to your server over the internet? More than likely, it's not working at all. In the description down below, you'll find a link to port forwarding guides for not only one router, but multiple routers as well. The process for connecting to your server may be a little bit different depending on how you're connected to the internet. If you just have your computer, a router, and then the internet, whether it's a fiber box or a LTE or 5G router, then you can follow the normal port forwarding guide. Though, if you're connected to a router that's connected to a router, to another one, etc., before you reach the internet, you'll need to follow the multi-router port forwarding guide in the description down below. Don't worry about how scary it sounds, it's incredibly simple and easy to follow along with, and when you're done with it, forwarding port 25565, other people should then be able to connect to your server through the internet, all you have to do is Google what is my IP and give them your IP address. It's incredibly simple and easy to do. Anyways, that's really about it. To save our server and close it, 
type save hyphen all and hit enter to save absolutely everything. And to close it, type stop, then hit enter. It'll stop and save everything and close our Fabric 1.19 server. It's incredibly simple. As long as that black window is open, it can be minimized, your server is running and people can join to play with you. You will need to run your computer for all the time as well as the server as long as you'd like your server to be up. It's completely free and easy to host by yourself. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick Forge 1.19 server hosting guide. Once more, in the description down below, you'll find a link to other guides if you need to follow along with anything else, including fabric, paper, spigot, bucket, etc. All for 1.19. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.